Lotus versus Metagame Gurus. Just Guy Control. And this is the first Obzon company we've actually had on camera all weekend. Yeah, the deck uh, actually put up solid numbers making it into day two. There were five copies, the uh, fifth most represented deck in the day two metagame. Jacob will start the, turn the game on Forest into Birds of Paradise. Now with Baugh's list, it's worth noting what type of combo he's playing here. He does have Kitchen Finks, the infinite life combo, but he does not playing Murderous Red Cap today. So instead of getting infinite damage by going and getting Murderous Red Cap and then executing the Graveyard Loop, what he'll do is he will scry a one of Archangel of Thune to the top of the deck and then continue to gain infinite life and translate that into an arbitrarily large team of attackers. Yep, also has the option to gain the life with the Spike Feeder Archangel of Thune combo as well. Jim on the draw. First turn will find a Steam Vents and Bolt the Bird. Board is clear as you move to, to Jacob's second turn. Red deck versus Birds of Paradise deck 101. Okay, Don't let them <laughs> bolt the bird. Jacob plays a second land and just passes the turn. It's a copy of Windswept Heath. So you go over to Jim. A lot more removal in his hand. We've seen this all tournament from the Jeskai deck. Two Nahiris, a Serum Visions, a Lightning Helix, and lands available for Jim. He'll start with Serum Visions. Draws a copy of Path to Exile. He sees a scry, a third Nahiri, and another and a replacement Serum Visions. I have a feeling that Jim's not too interested in the third Nahiri. Actually, it looks like he picked up an Ancestral Visions this turn, not Path to Exile. Yeah, the Nahiri you'd expect on the bottom, but does he want Serum Visions? So he has his, I believe, two more land drops in his hand. The best, the best thing that Serum Visions does, his hand's already pretty strong for playing the game. So digging for lands is really what this hand might need. The fourth land drop is an uncertain matter. So you might hold on to Serum Visions for that specific reason. Looks like Jim comes to the same conclusion. He goes ahead and keeps the Serum Visions on top, puts Nahiri on the bottom. Imagine we'll see him, he's going to go ahead and play Colonnade and pass. Had to choose there between Colonnade and Suspending Visions. He wants to make, just ensure that he gets to play land on curve. If he wants to cast Lightning Helix on the following turn, he'll be able to use a blue mana and then cast the Helix with their other two mana. So playing the tap land now makes sense for that reason. Yeah, he'll have to decide between that. If he does that, he'll have to decide between Suspending Visions and casting Serum Visions next turn. Mm -hmm. Serum Visions has the most immediate payoff, but he can't keep kicking the can down the road on this Ancestral Vision unless he just plans to discard it to Nahiri. Yeah, with, with this many turns down, maybe that is the plan. Third land from Jacob, no creatures. Go back to Davis. Nahiri, Nahiri. Visions, Helix, Serum Visions, two lands. Yeah, so now he'll for sure be able to cast Nahiri on time. So really just deciding whether he wants to suspend the vision or discard it down the road. I like suspending it with Ba just kind of up to nothing. Yeah, with so little pressure, Jim, Jim takes that line, suspends Ancestral Vision on four. Leaves up his Lightning Helix mana. We'll see. Yeah, no Serum Visions just yet. He'll pass. Yeah, already has a removal spell in hand. Doesn't need to dig for his land drop next turn. I like hanging on to the Serum Visions. Ba getting overgrown two on end step gets it untapped. May have some instant speed end step cards. Mm, could be a little even mind sensor action. And that's exactly what it will be. One of even mind sensor in the main deck. He goes ahead and plays that. Jacob draws. I've lost that card a couple times in my day. Did Jeff buy you that? Jeff he draws. Jim actually holds him on end step. Says okay. Avon Mind Sensor attacks, so some damage in Jim down to 15. Yeah. Jim showing some patience with that Lightning Helix. Avon Mind Sensor is not the most threatening creature. Jim's next land drop is a basic island, so not too worried about that. Here come some of the combo pieces. Viscera Seer from Ba. He has collected Company and Court of Calling in his hand, but he misses the fourth land drop here. That's a big miss. Yeah, that's uh, pretty brutal for Ba. Lightning Helix. Look at Jim. We're going to play it on Viscera Seer. Not on even Mind Sensor. Ba will sacrifice in response. No life gain for Davis. 
Yes, yeah, Seer is a meaningful combo piece. I like getting rid of that a lot more than I like messing around with the 2-1 Mind Sensor. We could also just yeah. Nahiri and get rid of the Mind Sensor this turn exactly. as well. Exactly. Seer wasn't tapped. Maybe that's the, de the decider. So Jim plays that island he was sitting on, plays Nahiri the Harbinger, exiles Jacob's Mind Sensor, and it's back to a clean board for Jim Davis. Ball will play Kitchen Finks. Gain two. That is it. No fourth land yet. And now we're back to Jim Davis. He is establishing control as that vision's pet ticks down to two. The draw was Spell Snare. A two of in Jim's main deck. Baugh has spent a lot of time not casting two mana spells, so very unlikely that there's any in his hand. Plenty in the deck, though. Now here's an interaction you were telling me about that you're a big fan of in the deck. Serum Visions, drawing a card and scrying two. Jim's doing this before activating Nahiri. Yeah, you get to find a card that you're looking for, keep it on top, use the Nahiri to rummage that card into your hand instead of waiting until next turn. Now this time, Jim didn't really find anything he liked, so both cards went to the bottom. His draw was a basic land. It looks like he's going to try again. Here's another Serum Visions. Draws Steam Vents two more lands to the bottom. All right. Yeah, sure was a lot oh, of junk on the top of the deck there. Tongue in cheek there. And Jim's like, okay, I'm glad. N unhappy with our draws, but glad we're getting rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> Still hasn't used Nahiri. Now she will go up to four and discard that Steam Vents. One more chance of hitting a card he wants. Lightning Bolt was the find. Acceptable against Finks. I think he would have ideally had a path to exile there, but I guess with Jacob stuck on three lands, maybe Bolt is better than Path. Yeah, you really are not married to giving Jacob a land here. That would not be a great mm -hmm. sequence. And also, Nahiri can exile the Kitchen Finks once it attacks. Yeah, do you care about the card disadvantage when you have an Ancestral Visions on two? I mean, no. No, no, almost well, never. So I guess Bolt and Kitchen Finks, yeah, it's great. Well, you can't Nihiri exile. It's, it's touchier, right? So he bolts the Kitchen Finks. It's going to come persist back into play untapped. So Jacob goes to 19. Yeah, that would have been more an issue for the backup Nihiri. And I like, oh, okay. I like Jim not letting it come to that. Keep in mind those black dice are minus one, minus one counters, where the white dice are plus ones. Or any other sort of thing. Loyalty, plus one, time counters. <laughs> Arrow counters, if uh, we have any serrated arrows. Char charge counters. Um, music counters. <laughs> Spike feeder is the play for Ball. A one of in his deck to go with the one of Archangel of Thune. Plays it and passes. Just regular old plus one, plus one counters for the Spike feeder. Jim draws another Ancestral Visions. I'm interested to see whether this is something he'll suspend or rummage away. He has one Visions coming off suspend next turn. If he ever resolved a second one, I would think that would just put the game out of reach. First one might even be enough. Um, he has Nahiri back up Nahiri, so it's not too far from setting up an Emrakul attack just with the tools he already has available. Plus is the Nahiri. He'll hang on to the Visions, it looks like, for now, as he's going to discard a basic planes. Draws into Sulphur Falls, so upgraded his land. If he's not discarding it there, I assume he'll be suspending it this turn then. I think he just didn't upgrade his land. That was his second white source, so if he ever wants to act with this colonnade, he'll need to find another white. He does suspend the second Ancestral Visions. Hand is Sulphur Falls, Nahiri, Spell Snare. So it actually is lacking on removal right now. Despite all those serum visions. We go back to Ba. His draw is Anaphrensic Country Spirit. He is still waiting on land number four. But Court of Callings in his hand. He'll play Viscera Seer. He does have Anaphrensic in hand too. Now because that Kitchen Finks is, has a minus one, minus one counter on it, it's not infinite life just yet. Right, uh, Ba is currently off double white for Anaphrensic. Oh, yeah, it's a basic forest. Yeah, mana woes all around. So he'll swing the 2 1 and the 2 2. Both at Nahiri. She drops down to 2. Ba, no choice but to just pass the turn. 
now Jim will cash in the first Ancestral Visions. Some of the best text in all of Magic history. Draw three cards. I can get behind a good draw three. Two copies of Path to Exile picked up there. And, you know, and that's just... That's why that's <laughs> that's a good card. <laughs> like, we were talking about last year, and Jim didn't have too much removal. Now he's just got the best removal spell in the format and in multiples. Okay. Only one white mana. Oh, but he actually, wait, wait, and Sasser Vision's even better than that. He picked up a Hollowed Fountain off the Visions, too. Yeah, picked up a couple lands off that Vision. So sure, just be able everything. To have double white. Might use... The rest of the current Nahiri to exile one of these creatures, cast the backup Nahiri with Path to Exile on this this turn as well. So when you have so many of these visions on suspend, you can just using all your creatures, e cards, even your planeswalkers, just as removal spells. That that seems like a worthy pursuit. Considering that the removal spell that Jim has is Path to Exile, and Ba would be getting his fourth land for Collected Company, maybe not. Yeah, I guess Jim doesn't he doesn't want to give him lands unless he has to. Yeah, he'll plus that Nahiri. Max value here. Discarding, it looks like, a Scalding Tarn. Draws into a Celestial Colonnade. That would be his second Colonnade. He'll play that for the turn. Hand is now Path, Path, Nahiri, Spell Snare, Land. Jacob draws no land on the Insight, but it's a Birds of Paradise this time. I was interested. So Jacob had two mana there on end step. I was wondering whether he would try to throw one spike feeder counter onto the Kitchen Finks to reset it. Yeah, he could get the Kitchen Finks back to a 3-2 so he'd be able to persist. Right. Currently, yeah. he has his power split as two two-power creatures. That might be better to sit on as an instant speed trick. You think the odds that Jim won't remove your car creature are just so little that we're just attacking, we're not comboing? Yeah. That seems pretty reasonable. You know that the deck is full of Path to Exiles. He wants to get something pathed right now. Yeah. Here's a swing for four. That would be enough. If he attacks it, it's enough to take down the Nahiri. That should force action from Jim. Or force the backup Nahiri. Uh, Jim's hand is so good right now. <laughs> I see a shake of Jacob's head. He knows that all his options are wanting here. Plays Birds of Paradise. And passes. No attacks. Jim oh, one tap. And Special Visions ticks down to two. Draws Snapcaster Mage. A very welcome draw for Jim. Best card in modern. So I suppose the fear for Ba with the no attacks is he doesn't want that Nahiri to be able to exile any creatures. He wants to keep all these pieces around for assembling a potential combo. So Jim switches over to switch his dice for the Nahiri as he takes her up to six. Discards a hollowed fountain. Yeah, we're going for the black die now. I mean, if that tells your opponent you mean business. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I believe you. Five lands in play. Sixth one and six and seven are in hand for Jim. <laughs> he will play Arid Mesa. He just has to decide how he wants to control the game. It looks like it's going to be Snapcaster Mage targeting Lightning Bolt. He'll light, He'll continue to bolt the bird, keeping the mana denial on. And now Jim will go for Court of Calling in response. Aha! The truth is out about the no attacks. That's a read that Jim had must have had. Oh, wow, surely. Wow, so Jacob not attack. So that's courting for three in response. Jim's deck's actually light on counter magic in the main. It's for two, actually. He'll get Spell Skite. Ooh. Didn't tap the, the, the Spike Feeder. This will be able to eat that Lightning Bolt. Three Mana Leaks and three Remands in Jim Davis's main deck, but none of them in his hand. It meant that that actually gets yeah. to resolve here. With this the is number, a good play for Jacob. With the number of cards that Jim is seeing, it's 
pretty unlikely that he hasn't been able to find one of those, actually. Yeah, I expect that to that mana leak to work. And and now Jim's in a tough spot. Jacob pays two life, redirects the lightning bolt to Spellskite. That just all happens. And could Jacob win from here? This is I, I thought, you know, Jim has been pressing the advantage slow more and more, but Yet Jacob has another court of calling. Yeah. He has Kitchen Finks and Viscera Seer in play. Way to make the Kitchen Finks back to the 3 2. Spellskite back up. Here's Anafenza Kintry Spirit from Jacob. This one has to eat that spell snare. There's yeah, I don't want that combo piece around one creature and then Jacob gains infinite life. Mm -hmm. Spell snare on the Anafenza. Yeah, but uh, Ba has enough hanging out to cord for another Anafenza. Absolutely. Yeah, you would still have five creatures to cord for Anafenza and two mana to make the Kitchen Finks back to a 3 2. So the spell snare resolves. Anafenza hits the graveyard. You're right. Ba has one more Anafenza and two Malira in his deck. I think why Anafenza is the more tempting option is then all he has to do is play a. It, that will reset the Kitchen Finks for him, whereas Malira wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I guess he's still a spike feeder if he really needs to reset. Yeah, I, I would imagine that he would cord for Anafenza and then spike feeder to boost up the Kitchen Finks that way. Or he could even right. just cast another creature on top of that. Yeah, he'll go for Court of Kong. Yeah, so the, what I mean by saying it would reset, the Anafenza wouldn't, but he would play it, then he'd play any other creature, and then the combo would be online. Is Jim Davis actually going to lose this game? I that was wondering the same thing here. Court of Calling for Jacob Baugh. He can go for a combo here. So if he gets one of the two drops, he has two mana, so he can put a counter from Spike Feeder onto Kitchen Finks and then have the combo. Jim has two Path to Exiles in hand and has the mana to cast them both. So I believe he can disrupt it, but it's going to be at a, at a very big cost. Yeah, you know, the first one's going to take down the Spell Skite. Um, he has a second Path to Exile to disrupt the combo, but then Boss still has a substantial board. I guess Jim gets to Exile. Nahiri can go to work on some of the creatures. Yeah, then Nahiri's solid as well. So this is with Cord on the stack. Jim is going to, he's just going to path a spell sky, not even attempt something else. Yeah, no reason to mess around. So sky is gone. Jacob will get a land. You have to make sure actually that Jim has a white mana source he can fetch here off Arid Mesa. He has discarded a lot of lands to Nahiri. Yeah. I don't want to say it's not there, but I'm not 100% sure he know has one. He has for sure discarded his basic planes, so that one's not hanging out anymore. One Hallowed Fountain in the deck. I don't even know if he has a Sacred Foundry. The Hallowed Fountain was discarded as well. He's got a Sacred Foundry. We'll check here. Is it still in the deck? Yeah, and... Uh there's the Sacred Foundry showing up, so back up, Path to Exile will be cast. Just under 10 minutes left in order to register for our final Swiss event of the evening. Yeah. The like Sacred Foundry is left in the deck. Modern Challenge at 4 p.m. today. Please make your way to the side events stage now. This is the last call, 10 minutes left in registration. Now Jim's not sure exactly how he wants to disrupt this combo. Uh, there's still the Maliras left in the deck to replace those. He's already gone through one Viscera Seer. Chooses to go for the Anafenza, though. And that's usually the part of the combo that you uh, end up breaking up. And Seeing his boss stuck on lands for so much, he values getting the basics out more than he does sacrificing the creature to the Viscera Seer for the Scry. So Swamp into play. Jacob is going to move that counter from Spike Feeder over to Kitchen Finks. So gets to reset here. Jim, now he draws the mana leak. Yeah, that one's a... Yeah. It's late, but is it too late? Jacob still has a collected company in hand, but he actually has... I mean, Jim just cast a flurry of Path to Exiles. Yeah.
Jim goes for Nahiri to exile the Kitchen Finx. Uh, Jacob doesn't want it exiled, though, so he'll sacrifice it to Viscerous here. Yeah, this one was a fine sacrifice. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll keep that around for now, because remember, Spike Peter can reset it again. And it was a quick top for Ba as well. That's bad news if you're in Jim's seat. Yeah, he's got the Mana Leak in hand. He's got another Ancestral Vision coming off Suspend next turn, but he last turn used a Spell Snare and two Path to Exiles. I don't know how much more removal he has. Well, we'll find out how much he needs. Yeah. Here's Collected Company. Curious if Jim Mana leaks here. Yeah, resolves. Does he find the combo piece he needs? Well, Eternal Witness is pretty good. That's in here. Yeah. Kitchen Finks, Eternal Witness. And maybe even Malira. Malira would do it. Right, then he'd be able to uh, take the last counter off the Spike Feeder, get that Kitchen Finks back to a 3 2. Yeah, and then go from there. It's scavenging Ooze, Eternal Witness. Ooze is pretty solid here. Right. Jeskai Control deck doesn't have really much in the way of creatures to exile, though you can ward off any Snapcaster Mage shenanigans with it. And he'll get back that Court of Calling. Six creatures in play, plus two lands, means he can cord, he can cord for two and pay for... Well, almost could cord for two and pay for Mana Leak. You actually can't with Convoke... I guess he has he birds has of paradise. Birds. Okay, yeah. so he can pay as three real mana. And you look how Jacob does this too, and he, he knows it. You see him tapping the five creatures except for the birds to cord for two here. He is playing around mana leak. Jim can mana leak though, and if then if he if, if Ba pays, he can no longer move the spike feeder counter yeah. this turn. If Jim doesn't mana leak, then he gets comboed out here, doesn't he? Yes, on this turn. So I think you do Mana Leak, just so you don't right. get comboed immediately. And Jim's last card is Nahiri, so that's not help. <laughs> All right, so Mana Leak here. Jacob pays. Now he can go get a two drop. And I, I don't think that he changes his mind, given the situation. You know, you still set up your combo for the following turn, and... You know that Nahiri activation's coming at least. Jim's going to draw three cards, but he's still applying, applying a good amount of pressure. Malira has the pick. So, combo's in play. Jacob would have infinite life were it not if he had two more mana. He could move that counter from Spike Feeder onto Kitchen Finks, and then Finks plus Seer plus Malira, that's a win. But Jim untaps, and now he gets his Ancestral Visions. So yeah, This is a big draw yeah. step plus draw three for Jim. Ugh. Remand, land, land. Yeah, <laughs> look, see that on his face. Lightning Bolt. So he drew one card. He can remand his own bolt to cycle the remand. Ugh. He has enough mana that it's... It, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I just threw up it in my works. mouth a little bit. It works. This is disgusting. You can cycle it for three. He can play Nahiri. He can play the Nahiri from his hand. So he can exile one, twice if he wants here. I think he has to just bolt this Viscerous here. And then maybe start exiling things with Nahiri. Might have to employ the backup Nahiri to clean up this board oh, a little yeah, bit. Oh, yeah. Lots of exiles. And that's what we'll do. Lightning Bolt on Viscerous here. Jacob will sack it to scry one, but now he cannot sack anything else in response. So mm. Jim can go after these creatures. Well, lucky for him, he wanted the top card anyway. Oh. <laughs> if you're a Jim Davis fan, don't want to see that. Nahiri minus two exile scavenging ooze. That's the largest creature on the board. Another Nahiri. Oh, new ones at four. A little visual shortcut by binning yeah, the new I was copy. Yeah, I was going to say, Jim, that's not the new Nahiri. That's, a, <laughs> that's the other one. It still has two counters, and you've used it. <laughs> no judge would ever rule in my favor in that situation, rightfully so. Yeah. He wants to exile another creature. 
This choice can. This is a tougher choice. He's looking like he has to take half the Spike Feeder Kitchen Finks interaction. Yeah, I assume that he would go for Kitchen Finks here. Looks like it is. Yeah, it's just mini it, Kitchen Finks. It's way harder to set up the Archangel of Thune combo from this position than it is right. to set up the Kitchen Finks combo. Unless, of course, that top card, the Jacob's Cry to the top, is Archangel, in which case. Well, well, even still, he has to gain life before the Spike Feeder. Oh, yeah, well, he doesn't have two counters, it only has one. Right. So Jacob draws. Well, hey. Kitchen Finks. <laughs> it's back. Jim will remand, just wants to get a new card. But Jacob's last card is Collected Company. Collected company in response to the remand here. Let's see what this one finds. Looks like Fiend Hunter. And Fulminator Mage. Both one ofs in his deck. Fiend Hunter will hunt away the Snapcaster Mage, Fulminator Mage in play. There was some argument for Ba using the Feed Hunter to tuck away one of his own creatures. Like Eternal Witness? Yeah, uh, just, you know, if it was removed or if he found a Viscera Seer, you could just sacrifice it to get that creature back. But he's just firmly on the beatdown plan, it looks. Yeah, he goes ahead and tacks down the Nahiri. Jim draws timely reinforcements. But after all these Ancestral Visions, Jim's hand now is just land, land, timely reinforcements. He's going to lose the normal way. Yeah, well, it doesn't say draw three good cards. And that's, that's what Jim is uh, paying for here. An impressive show here by Obs on Company. Just outvaluing the value deck. Yeah. Slog through two Visions and two Nahiris. Could go for Colonnade, but bought at the ready with Fulminator Mage. So Jim makes timely reinforcements. Gains six, makes three one ones, passes the turn. And he doesn't have any sort of trump. You know, there's nothing like Sphinx's revelation in this build that's gonna just win him a game. Yeah, Nahiri is the only planeswalker yeah. as well. There's nothing else crazy that can come down. Yeah, sometimes you'll see a one of revelation in Jeskai decks to just for situations like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his biggest draw spell is going to be one that takes four turns. So Boz thinking about how well he can combat against these three one one tokens. Interesting that he sent in the feed hunter here. Well, if it's triple blocked, spike feeder can make it a two four. Aha! There it is. So here's the swing. It looks like Jim is going to go ahead and attempt for a Celestial Colonnade here, but... It at um, least removes no. the Fulminator Mage as an attacker. Right. He's got, what, two more Colonnades in waiting? Yeah. Okay, got to start somewhere. Yeah, he's not Colonnade light. So Fulminator Mage will take down the Celestial Colonnade. Jim went to 14 on that fetch here. That life total actually does matter here. Jim does have multiple Colonnades. Yeah. Could, could win the damage race. Now, of course, there's two copies of Gavany Township in Boz's deck. He doesn't have one in hand yet, but as soon as he finds one, then this, this damage race becomes very difficult from Jim's side. Yeah. Um, speaking of difficult, Boz also has a collected co or a court of calling in hand, and ooh, and a Kitchen Finks, the one that was remanded. Yeah. Yeah. His, his hand is quite good. I don't know that Jim will work through that. So, if Eternal Witness looks to trade with us with a token, Jim takes one, and now Jacob. Plays Kitchen Finks. And he's going to go ahead and cord up. Looks like a Viscera Seer. He has the combo. Malyra Finks are in play. Cords for one. All right. Now, Infinite Life does not immediately win. Jim plays Emrakul. Correct. Of course, Ba's going to stack the rest of his deck, presumably leaving Archangel of Thune on top. Yeah, it's not a good spot for Jim, but... He's not, yeah. Oh my. All right. You could also just leave Court of Calling on top in case anything happens on Jim's turn. 
That's probably the better route. Better to leave Cord than than Archangel on top. Yeah. He cuts the deck, and I think he he's debating which one he wants on top. Could even leave Gavney Township on top, to be totally honest. Yeah, this this went from what looked to be handily Jim's game to handily Super Jacob's weird. game. Jim plays Serum Vision, scries two more lands to the bottom. That was his draw for the turn. What did he hit off the Visions? Is it enough to save him? It's a Lightning Helix. And any delusion of Jim winning the mana race is over. Ba hanging out at sideways eight. Trying to think about what he can do in this game, though. The only way out for him, really, is to try to Emrakul and annihilate Ba out of the game. But he's just too far behind on board. He's going to die before he can set up anything like that. He doesn't even have the Nahiri <laughs> to get there. Not the lands to cast an Emrakul if he top decked it naturally, either. So re -scry here. And if you take a look at the round clock, we're over halfway through this match. Absolutely. The mem so for a reminder, you just joining us, Jim Davis at 12 and 2 is already a lock for top 8. If he wins, he will be the one seed. If he loses here, he drops to the seventh seed. Jacob Baugh, if he wins here, will finish the tournament in eighth or ninth place. Yeah, hopefully eighth. Looks like uh, he did keep Court of Calling going for the Court. Presumably, Archangel of Tune will show up. Can use this Kitchen Finks Malira Viscera Sierra combo to gain an arbitrary life again. Archangel of Tune will trigger every time he gains life, put a plus one, plus one counter on every creature he controls, make this Birds so of Paradise. A I'll get a few one one counters on some things. At least 13, so that this Birds of Paradise will be lethal. Well, that seems like it should be enough. Yeah. Yes. So Jacob setting that up. Now Hill Court of Calling. Jim checking the graveyard. He'll confirm. Lightning Helix on Viscerous here with the cord on the stack. Yep, and since the Spike Feeder only has the one counter on it, the Archangel okay. of Thune wouldn't be able to combo without the Seer in play. So Jim will be alive for at least one more turn. See if Jacob gets Archangel anyway. Yeah, he will. The yep. three fours in play. It's still lethal next turn. Well, just as an attacker, right? Well, actually, no. I, I apologize. Um, Bond doesn't won't know his top card um if he finds a sacrifice outlet or an eternal or eternal witness it could be lethal next turn well the archangel is threatening to win this game on its own even without any kind of combos with the spike feeder the archangel can become a four five um and then even the celestial colonnade blocker wouldn't be good enough on jim's side jim does not have enough mana to activate both colonnades that he has as blockers to sign up for the last this event of the weekend so Jim draws. We go back over to Jacob Baugh. Archangel will attack. Kitchen Finks joins. This is a swing. Yeah, and the Archangel six. is a solid attack because the Spike Feeder can make it a 4 5. The Kitchen Finks is an expendable attacker because even if it dies, it just gains some life triggers the Archangel to make the rest of the team larger. Well, the, also puts a counter on the Spike Feeder. Right, if the Archangel connect, if, if any life is gained in any way here, then Jacob goes off. Yes. Well, as long as the Archangel is still around. So Archangel will be blocked by Celestial Colonnade. Yeah, so now it's unlikely that the Spike Feeder is going to be around. That's just going to kill itself to put the counter on the Archangel. Sure. So he won't have the infinite combo, but he'll have a lot of good attackers here. But Jim may have a response. 
He's going to Lightning Bolt the Fiend Hunter. Oh, wow. Okay. In response, he's going to Lightning Bolt to the Fiend Hunter. In response to that, Baugh will cast Collected Company. So we'll see what can be hit here. There's still a chance for Jim right now. This Collected Company is going to hit Kitchen Fink's Noble Hierarch. <laughs> okay. So because he found Kitchen Fink's, that will put a plus one, plus one counter on the... Uh, on the um, the one three, the fiend hunter, because the archangel's in play. So it'll be a one two for it, and it survives lightning bolt. bolt. And then Jim will concede. So game one, after forty minutes, goes to Jacob Baugh with Obzon Company. Just a marathon wow. game one. Wow. Okay. Are they even going to be able to finish a game two at this little All time? Right. Pro maybe. So, in so, Jim's favor. <laughs> so here's what. You, so we talked about different situations here. If from Jim's seat, a draw is just as good as a win. Yep. So if he can win game two before, in, before the time is up, then for Jim, mission accomplished. Okay. So he, he's looking for one of these all-in, fast Nahiri kind of, in Nahiri Emakul wins. That's probably his if deck's best route. he wins in extra turns of game two, yeah. Just anything that lets him win, that'll work. So we'll let's quickly go through the sideboards. I imagine these players will be going quickly as well. Yes. On Jim's side, two negate, two spreading seas, two crumble to dust, a celestial purge, a dispel, a wear tear, and engineer's explosives, an anger of the gods, a wrath of god, a Vendillion click, a stony silence, and an is it static. Caster. Explosive, Anger of the Gods, Wrath of the God, those are all great. Static Caster, there's enough one toughness creatures where that one's going to come into play here. Uh, there's probably not enough black targets for the Celestial Purge, and you know, there's not even a Murderous Red Cop in Boz's list, so it's mostly just these sweepers and the Is It Static Caster. <laughs> Some argument for Negate, Collected Company, and Court of Calling. Court of Calling are hit by that, so that one's okay too. Right. Playing his heart out right now for the top eight is none other than Jacob Baugh member of Team Lotus here. The 27-year-old from Waterloo, Illinois, has two Open Series wins, as long as with eight Open Series top eights. His most recent win was back in Season 1. He had a win in a standard Open with playing the four-color Rally deck. Big fan of all sorts of board games, RPGs, PC games, and card games. Uh, a certified auto mechanic as well. Not was, That's something I would not have expected. You know, I, I wouldn't have expected it, but it doesn't surprise me. All right, well, right now he's one game from finishing the tournament here on 12 and 3. It's not a lock for him in top 8 if he makes it in, but he's got a good shot. He'll probably he'll finish somewhere in the 8 to 10 range with a win here. I'd pay him to work on my car. All right. Well, what about his sideboard then? Three Path to Exile, one Kataki Wars Wage, three Fulminator Mage, a Kasali Pride Mage, two Tide Hollow Scholar, one Sin Collector, one Orzov Pontiff, one Abrupt Decay, a Maelstrom Pulse, and then a copy of Farika God of Affliction. The hand disruptive elements seem very good here. The Tide Hollow Scholar is the Sin Collector. I like those quite a bit. Uh, see what's going on in Jim's hand. Take out the best element. Fulminator Mage is also pretty good. More good on the play than the draw, but Jim has so many non-basics, and uh, he's pretty mana-hungry in his deck, so I like the Fulminator Mage a good amount. So Tide Hollow Scholars, Fulminator Mages, Sin Collector. Maybe Farika God of Affliction? I don't know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. That one seems a little closer. I don't know if that's just like a novelty sideboard slot, or if it's something that he actually wants against... Maybe it's more for graveyard decks than control I decks. I think so. In the mirror, it's probably pretty good, actually. Yeah, yeah. Remove a Kitchen Finks when it's trying to persist. Sure. Jim's going to have a tough task ahead of him. The player here is the, a methodical control player in most formats, but one thing that he has shown, one of the few chinks in the armor of our Players' Championship is having to win fast. He has <laughs> trouble turning, the, turning up the speed. Um, and, and you see that in his deck choice as well. Just High Control, even among the fastest players in the room, doesn't win very quickly. Yeah. For the captain here of Team Lotus, though, he was the player's champion last year, sweeping his way through the elimination rounds on Sunday. The 32-year-old from Long Island, New York, also has two Open Series wins to his name, 10 top eights, two invitational top eights. Also a radio DJ, something you may not have known about him. DJ JD. Jim will be on the play. Starts out on Scalding Tarn. And will fetch land at the end of turn. Both players just trading fetch lands for now. Last game we saw Jim get... Resolve two Ancestral Visions, get a turn four Nahiri, sit around killing creatures for the longest time, and then actually got overpowered by the Ops on Company deck. If that's not the game plan he needs to win, is there a different tact he can take? Uh, using his Nahiri as an Emrakul finder rather than a removal spell. That's really the, yeah. only, that's the other thing his deck does. On taps, so you see his hand, a Mana Leak, and three Lightning Bolts. 
He'll play Steam Vents into play tapped here. So this hand is great if Ba has turn one Birds of Paradise. But if Ba's hand is just a slower hand, maybe he has turn two Spell Skite, turn three Kitchen Finks. Jim's hand's a lot worse against that. Have to correct here, at least one of those three landing bolts is a copy of Anger of the Gods out of the sideboard from Jim. Okay, so that's a lot better against those Kitchen Finks hands. Sure. Standard classic player. Ba fetches for Overgrown Tomb on end step. Shocks for Temple Garden. Online now at pairings.starcitygames.com. Additionally, both standings and pairings after round six will be posted in the... Yeah, and then we'll get a closer look at the hand. Tide Hollow Sculler for Jacob Ba. Jim Bavis has Sulphur Falls, Planes, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt, Anger of the Gods, and Mana Leak. All right. Jacob can take one of them. Jim's just going to get the card back, but it'll take him a turn and a mana to do so. The double Lightning Bolt Anger makes it so there's no super good play with the Tide Hollow Scholar. There's no way he won't just be able to kill it with a Lightning Bolt and get the card back. If it was just one Lightning Bolt Anger, you could take the Bolt and force the Anger to be the answer to the Scholar. As is, he just takes the Mana Leak, says that you won't be able to cast that until you cash in a Lightning Bolt. So Jim untaps, plays Sulphur Falls, bolts away the Tide Hollow Scholar, gets back his Mana Leak, says go. His pickup for the turn was a copy of Serum Vision, so we'll get to... That'll be good down the road. Jacob plays land three, goes for Kitchen Finks, shows him a Farika. Shows us a Farika. Now we know. Huh. Now if you're Jim, yeah, now he's not going to mana leak the Kitchen Finks. <laughs> I wonder if this was this is masterfully yeah, played yeah. by Jacob Ba, right? <laughs> Jacob Ba's mechanics are generally very tight. You know, he's, he's never going to miss sacrificing a creature to Visara Seer. Very tight with what he finds with Corda Calling. I, it wouldn't amaze me if that flash if you was, think it was intentionally purposeful. Oh gosh, he's like, oh, how do I get him to not counter this Finks? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show him Farika. We're gonna get on him. accident. We're gonna get him. With, he probably doesn't even know what Farika does. He's just gonna think it's really good. <laughs> Kitchen Finks swings. Jim goes down to 16. He picked up a path to exile off that Serum Visions. Now, if Jacob just cast Freak on this turn, I have a pretty good feeling that it wasn't a bluff. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. Birds of Paradise in Jacob's hand. He's going to just pass, though, with four mana up. Jim will draw two. Remand has his pickup. I wasn't sure if those would be staying in after sideboard. But I guess with enough cards like Collected Company and Court of Calling, it's not so bad. Yeah, I could... I could see an argument for trading Roman straight up for negate against those two spells, but it certainly plays there. So, land five from Jim. Going to pass. Jacob will find a land on end step. Tapped or untapped. We'll see if there's a collected company being tried for. Probably one into Mana Leak anyway. He finds Godless Shrine tapped. Yeah, you know, Ba is a Kitchen Finks. Jim's got nothing going on on the table. Just content to beat down until Jim forces him to do something else. Remember, all... Game score 1-0, 7 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the round. If Jim wins this game, that will eliminate Ba. Ba needs a match win here. Jim already locked for top eight. He's looking for the one seed. With a draw here, I believe he gets the two seed. A win would get him first. Joining, he already is joined by his three teammates in the top eight. With the top seed, they would spread themselves completely across the bracket. I like Jim well enough. Jim's a great guy. But after game one, I'm really rooting for Ba here. That was so hard fought. Yeah, no kidding. Another swing puts Jim Davis down to 12. He has this path to exile, but just refuses to use it on Kitchen Finks. Yeah, he's just kind of stubbornly holding on to that one. I, I, I have a feeling that I would have pulled the trigger on that one by now. Now, now he's out in a filing, he'll use Anger of the Gods on Kitchen Finks. That's another clean answer to the card. True. It exiles it. No persist. Jacob just untaps. Draws Collected Company now. Cracks a fetch land. That's his sixth mana source here. So now, could cast Farika and pay for Mana Leak. Not that it's great here. Yeah, I mean, Jacob's done a great job of stranding this Mana Leak in Jim's hand. Yeah. Just saying, if Jim wants to play a Glacial game, then okay, Jacob will do it too. Yeah, the we'll just trade land drops. The Abzon Company deck is much more capable of this kind of magic than any other creature-based deck. I suppose Kiki Cord is similar enough that, you know, put in the same category. So now here is Farika with enough mana to pay for Mana Leak up. See if Jim remands here just to cycle that away. I would not 
commit the remand here. I would save that for court of callings and collected companies. It looks like we have a non-English copy and a call for Oracle text is what's happening here. Yeah, I mean, if Jim can find a Nahiri, he can just exile the Farika. Yeah, it it's is an enchantment. just an enchantment. So he'll remand, draw, draws into Arid Mesa, yet Jacob just immediately recasts. Can Jim find the Nahiri? Big question. Serum Visions was the pickup. This card is quite the prize in the matchup. Serum Visions from Jim. Draws a Lightning Bolt, Scry, Snapcaster Mage, Scalding Tarn. He wants the Mage, he does not want the land. So Jim has an Arab Mesa. That would be his land drop for the turn. I'm surprised we didn't see him crack Arab Mesa and then cast Serum Visions. Well, at what point here do all these Lightning Bolts and Snapcaster Mages change Jim's strategy, if ever? Well, with the pace that Ba is playing this game and not really committing to the board, eventually, you know, you just start bolting in with Snapcasting. Especially if you start missing land drops, then you obviously just put a Lightning Bolt upstairs. All right, now Ba will play Birds of Paradise, play Viscera Seer. Remember, all these creatures count double thanks to Farika. Still trying to find your seat. Well, you yeah, three cards left hand. in hand. A Collected Company and a Court of Calling are among them. Yeah, Ba leaving up mana to cast either of those spells or just activate right, Farika to make some 1-1s. One -ones. Sure, he'll pass the turn back to Jim. Jim does have Mana Leak in hand, but both players know about it. And now that's the Snapcaster Mage Jim kept on top. Two Bolts, two Snapcaster Mages, a Mana Leak, and a Path. This is what Jim's deck does, but how can he make it add up to something that's lethal? If he treats those like Lava Spikes, he only has nine points here. He has 12, right? Oh, right, right. Two Snapcasters. Yeah, you have 12 points. He can snap cast. Yeah, it's, it's just hard. I mean, 12, 12 is still shy. <laughs> Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Jim's got to start making some decisions here. If Jim had a Celestial Colonnade, it would be a lot easier to try to transition to the burn deck. Yeah, he, he, all he would need was one hit from it, puts Jacob down to 13. Maybe Jacob cracks a fetch land, and yeah. then, then we got it. The way things are, though, he's probably going to have to start using those on creatures at some point here. End step, Jacob Ba, Farika will go ahead and exile the Tide Hollow Sculler to make a 1-1 one, one snake. Two damage in, Jim goes to 10. Modern open players, that is time Another Birds of Paradise from Ba. A pass of the turn. Will Jim start pulling the trigger on these? Yeah, for a long time, he, he was able to sit around wait to commit to a game plan. The action is starting to be forced. Uh, there is a chance that he uses his next turn to snap cast that Anger of the Gods, so I actually like that line a good amount. Yeah, well, well, it won't exile anything. There's still a Viscera Seer. I mean, it just cleans up the board for now. Yeah. I guess he could bolt the Viscera Seer, see how much Jacob sacks, then try to anger away those birds, because if he, if he doesn't exile the birds, Anger doesn't do anything. Farika just replaces them all with snakes. Yeah. And these birds seem fairly expendable. I could certainly see Ba sacrificing at least one just for a scry value. Two minutes in the round. So we're still we're on Jacob Ba's end step right now. Jim's at 10. And if Jim doesn't start cleaning up this board, Farika's dangerously close to actually turning into a creature. Um, Kitchen Finks and another creature could do that. I guess suppose these ones take seven loyalty, not five. Snap, Caster Mage on end step, bolting Jacob. Then he will go ahead and bolt Jacob again. Down to 11. Drew Lightning Helix. This could work. But there's enough mana in play here for Jacob to collect a company with mana leak backup. So Snapcaster swings. Jacob's going to just chump with a bird. Scry one with Viscera Seer. Jim's going to have to do the whole 11 points with burn spells. To be fair, he's got nine in hand right now, though. Halfway there. Yeah. Jacob turns the bird... The the recently passed birds into a snake. So now using insect tokens there. Those though are one one black green enchantment snakes. With death touch question mark? <laughs> we'll get the official wording here on Farika. <laughs> yes, with death yes. touch. Jim will path to exile away the death touch snake. So now the bird will jump in front of Snapcaster. So I guess the first bird of paradise 
floated mana and turned itself into a snake. The second one just blocked the Snapcaster Mage. Scry is to the top of the deck. Jim passes. Jacob will turn that bird into a snake. So tough here. A lot. Both players having to make some lightning fast decisions. Kitchen Finks drawn by Jacob Baugh. That puts him to 13. That's a nut. That's great. Yeah, it's a very solid pickup. So here is Finks. And especially with Viscera Seer, that's a possible four point life swing. And I don't know if there's much Jim can do about it. We have now confirming hitting turn zero. This is in Jacob's turn, so he will have turns two and four. Jim's turns will be one, three, and five. Mana leak on the Finks. Jacob will pay. Goes to 13. Jim doesn't have the seventh land, the Snapcaster mana leak on this turn. I think you you said it before, and I think put it really nicely, that if Jim had a colonnade, this plan could work. Yes. But without one, I just don't know. If he peels that one on this turn, it might be enough. Well, if he doesn't die in the meantime, he went to six on that attack. That's also true. So kitchen Finks in play, and one more time this week. another Kitchen Finks would be such a backbreaker. It would turn the freak into a 5-4. Snapcaster Lightning Bolt on Jacob's end step. Here's turn one for Jim. He's got Jacob to 10 on that play. Draws Path to Exile. Were there not a Viscera Seer, this would be great. Yeah. We'll see, he, he could tr bolt the Seer, then try to path away the Finks. It's a tough spot here. Yeah, if you go for that, then um, your Ba only has one land on tap at this point. So that would allow the Snapcaster Mages to connect, though you have lost one of your burn spells. Presumably, Ba would sacrifice the Kitchen Finks in response just to guarantee that life gain. He assumes that something is up. And you know, if, J if, if, if Jim's able to draw more Snapcaster Mage, more burn spells, this plan could work out. But with the tools available, he does need the top of his deck to cooperate. And he goes for the path on the Kitchen Finks, uh, doesn't even mess around with the Viscera Seer. Seer will sacrifice the Finks. Jacob then gaining two life on the Persist. Goes back up to 12. I guess the out Jim can be on is he would need four more burn spells here. Swings both Snapcaster Mages. Jacob takes. He'll, he'll block one. Goes to 10. Creatures trade. Legacy players. Back to Jacob. Draws Gavany Township on the top. Oh, my. Swings. Activates Township. That would be lethal. This is going to force action from Jim. Lightning Helix is the play from Jim. We'll see where that Helix was targeted. I, I think Presumably it was upstairs. upstairs. Yeah, it's at yep. Jacob. So Jacob's at seven. Jim goes to nine. Then we'll drop down to three. Okay, from seven. Ba will be able to make a 1-1 one -one to block Snapcaster Mage. I, I don't think that Jim can close this game. He has Bolt in hand, draws Mana Leap. That won't do it. Two-headed giant. Next round pairings have been posted. And he extends the hand, so it is Jacob Baugh winning that one over Jim Davis. That game that one was, was insane. That both 